uh, I've been trying to figure out for the last couple of days exactly how to discuss the direction that the sport of college football is taking. And I'm going to start off with that today because Dan Wetzel wrote a really good article over at Yahoo Sports. And the title of that article says, Every College Football Fan Should Be Rooting for the Pac-12's Survival. And I, I think that he's right. If you are a true fan of this sport, you don't want all of these smaller conferences to just die, right? There are very interesting traditions and stories behind the majority of the college football programs that are out there, not just the big ones that will end up being in the Big Ten and the SEC. And even those that are in the Big Ten and the SEC, some of those are not exactly big brands, right? We talked on last week's show about Mississippi State, Purdue, Vanderbilt, Northwestern, etc. Those are not traditional powers. Those are not schools that are competing for national championships. And they are grandfathered into this thing, and so they will be making the same money, etc. But does anybody really want to watch Mississippi State against Oklahoma or Texas against Vanderbilt? I don't believe that that's going to draw your ratings, right? You're looking to make those monster matchups. Texas, Alabama, like we're getting this season. Oklahoma against Florida. Oklahoma against Texas A&M now, which used to be a Big 12 game, etc. As far as the Big 10 goes, you're looking for USC, Ohio State. UCLA against Michigan, UCLA against uh, Nebraska, even, if you want a helmet game. Those are the kind of games that you're looking for when you get to those. But that doesn't mean that you're going to be able to get good games all the time with these different matchups, right? You do have 16 teams in both of those leagues. But in the sport of college football, some of the more fun events that you get to watch, the more fun games, the more fun tailgating experiences, actually going to the games, learning about these universities, etc., are going to be those that are not found within those two leagues, right? Your Memphises, the way that they built up from basically nothing after the Tommy West era, all the way through uh, the Larry Porter era, which was dead, into what they built into with Justin Fuente, then Mike Norvell, uh, what they are currently with Ryan Silverfield, etc. You look at other programs as well, SMU coming from the death penalty and working their way up into the AAC, becoming a relevant college football program again. All of this, there's a lot to dissect in this sport, right? And you do have those that have worked their way back up to, I won't say Power 5, I think that thing is a thing of the past, but those schools, UCF, Cincinnati, Houston, and BYU, who at one point or another were college football powers, got relegated back down somewhat. I know relegation is a weird term. But they were at a smaller level. Now they've worked their way back up to the Big 12, and that was only made possible by the fact that Oklahoma and Texas moved. With the Pac-12, you don't want this tradition-rich conference to just completely disappear. I don't think it would be good for anybody if you've got Cal and Stanford and Oregon State and Washington State ending up in the Mountain West. Yes, it would be good for the Mountain West Conference, but it would completely knock those schools down a level based on television revenue that's coming in. It would still be entertaining to watch, interesting to watch. There just would not be as much substance there. So if you want more chances, right, you have to give more conferences an opportunity at the table. And what you have here is a Pac-10 at this point that is attempting to stay together. Now, we're going to talk here in a little bit about the ACC Pac-12 possible partnership some of the tweets that John Wilner has sent out where it looks like ESPN could be uh, maybe trying to make some moves so that the Pac-12 does get split and at least some of those powers end up staying relatively close to each other. We'll, we'll talk about that. But this is a great article that Dan has, has written, and it's not super long. I am going to read a portion of it, but it does make sense, right? Uh, he, he said on here, there's an odd segment of fans and media out there, the latter most likely attached to television networks, who seem to be cheering on a consolidation of college football. Just get the top 40 or 50 teams into two or three super conferences and have them play each other. Basically, this is FBS splitting from the NCAA, and then your G5s splitting from your P5s, right? That's basically what he's talking about. Uh, he said, 
turning it into two or three super conferences having play each other, it'll be more big brand names. Um, and I don't know what the just happened. Ah, uh, yes. Any- that was the Yahoo Sports page. <laughs> Maybe I'll be able to get that out and post it. I don't know. Uh, regardless, uh, he said it'll it'll be more big brand games producing more big television numbers or something like that. But here's the part that I wanted you to pay attention to. He said, perhaps for the casual fan who just wants the NFL light on Saturday night, this is appealing. Yes, more good games are a good thing. But for fans of college football as a whole, for the diehards that devour the sport 12 months out of the year, for the fans of middle or bottom of the pack teams in even the best conferences, a world without the Pac-12 or a new era of just two top-heavy juggernaut leagues would be a depressing disaster. Uh, it says, if you love college football, then you love it all. You relish in the circus. You crave the chaos. You celebrate the illogical nature of 130-something schools of all shapes and sizes competing for a single championship. Big state institutions, small religious ones, military academies, elite private universities, former JUCOs, whatever, right? Boise State used to be a, a junior college. If you, let me take part of what he just said there, uh, all competing for a single championship. We we know the truth here. They are not all competing for a single championship. They're just not. But uh, continuing on, it says, give us your tired, your poor, your huddled masses and lace them up in the most American of creations. Not everyone has to be Alabama. Not everyone can be Alabama. Not everyone should be Alabama. He said, it's watching TCU and SMU fight over an iron skillet or Colorado State and Wyoming battle for a boot. It's a late night snowstorm covering the field in Pullman. It's blue turf and the bounce house and sunsets over the Sun Bowl. It's Purdue trying to claim it has the biggest drum in the world. It's Baylor going from pathetic to powerful. It's Northwestern getting to the Big Ten title game. It's Cincinnati going 13-0. It's Cowbells in Starkville and Red Balloons in Lincoln until they ran out of helium and a dancing tree in Palo Alto. He's right. It's, it is all fun. It's all of these different things that go on in the sport are what make it interesting. They are what makes it worth watching, right? Because you don't have the big brand game matchups. And even when you do, it's not guaranteed to be a good game. You need all of these entities. In college football, college football, the sport itself has a wide array of fans, the types of people that are interested in the sport overall, and they will watch all of it. Now, yes, there are casuals that will watch everything, right? They, they want it to be more like the NFL. And the playoff stuff has just made it even more so. They have continued this. But... The sport at its foundation is still based on all those things. The people that went to school at certain places or grew up rooting for a specific team or whatever, you're going to lose a large faction of those if you continue to go down this hole. So, you know, I do see... Let me bring up a, uh, a, different, a different tweet here because this is one that went around, made the, uh, made the rounds. Joel Klatt said, It is incredibly hard to see right now in particular if your team is outside the SEC or the Big Ten, but the long-term outlook for fans is a good one. We will look back on these times as the moves that shaped a better postseason, again, uh, more quality non-con games, and stronger governance. I don't think that I agree with anything that he said here. I, I don't believe that this is good for fans. I don't think the outlook is good for fans overall. Uh, he said, we'll look back on these times as moves that shaped a better postseason. I don't necessarily agree with that. I think you are more likely to have teams left out than you were with the four team. I, in, this, in this current format that we have with USC and UCLA moving over, is there any world where Washington makes it into the playoff? Is there any world where Oregon makes it in? I, I don't think so. He said, uh, he said, more quality non-conference games. Well, wouldn't we get to a point here where all of the good games will be conference games? So the non-conference really wouldn't matter. USC against Michigan is no longer a possible Rose Bowl matchup. That is going to be happening every couple of years. So what makes that special? If you look at stronger governance... Who is supposed to lead this? Are we really looking to Kevin Warren and Greg Sankey to be the saviors of this sport? I 
I don't think I agree with this. And Mike Golick Jr. is is one of these that actually, I'm not going to say clapped back at him, but he said, believing this all hinges on whether you consume CFB as a national or a regional product. And Joel said, agreed, I think it's important to consider the potential college football has as the clear number two product in our country, maximizing its potential hinges on the consumption from a national market rather than a regional one. And this is where the problem comes in. He is talking about this specifically from a business point of view, from money, etc. And that's where all of the problems have come from. This sport was built as a regional sport. It's why we have such passion and devotion to the sport. It's why there is a difference when you go to a college football stadium as opposed to an NFL stadium. An NFL stadium seems very corporatized, a little bit dead. The people that are there are not passionate about their football program or their team or what's happening that day. They don't have to beat the guys across the way, right? In college football, it's completely different. When you see Mississippi and Mississippi State play, and that's Ole Miss and Mississippi State, when you see those two on the field, you understand the venom. You understand what the next year will be like for those teams. It will be absolute hell for whoever loses that game. It's the same thing with Texas and Oklahoma. It will be with Texas and Texas A&M. It is with Alabama-Auburn. It's a, it's just different. And it's not just those big-time matchups that I just mentioned. It's the smaller ones as well, right? Yet You have the smaller, and, and now eventually we will get this UAB and Memphis in the AAC. This used to be a prime-time rivalry, at least for those that are involved in the cities of Memphis and Birmingham. We're going to completely do away with this. And we already did at one point with all the realignment, right? Memphis and UAB stopped being conference mates, even though there was a rivalry there. All of this will be set up for better television numbers, and eventually it's going to get to a point where there are no more television numbers. There are people that are passionate about this sport from a certain range, and you're not going to be able to squeeze anything else out of that limit. So I don't know what the next what the next thing will be, but I am a little worried, uh, and I, I do hope that things work out for these Pac-12 schools, etc. I don't want any of them being quote unquote left behind. But at this point, who's to say what's going to happen? Right? I think we're headed much closer to two super conferences. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.